Christmas is over. We've been drinking. But there's still lots to celebrate. Ding! <laughs> We're back. So up for them. With a brand new series for a bright new year. I would say brace yourself. Right. You said you like a challenge. <laughs> oh, you didn't tell me this. There are fresh beginnings and high hopes for new homes. I want it all. <laughs> with the usual fireworks along the way. He does this <laughs> to wind me up. But as long as we stick to our resolutions... Winning, winning, winning. We'll get you home in the end. He's only gone and accepted it. <laughs> this week, we're in for a shock. <laughs> as everything seems to be going to plan. Uh, it's sold. It ticks all our boxes. But of course, it isn't. But neither of us like it. So we can't rest. So, what do you think of this wide, wide garden? <laughs> I mean, what more can we wish for? And we can't delay. Are you nearer 50 than 40? In our crusade to save the day. You ain't no Indiana Jones. This week, we're house hunting for two couples looking to buy their homes here in Birmingham. I'm with Ed and Elle, who've seen over 50 properties and know their search area inside out. And I'm with Ben and Laura, who are relocating from Bristol and don't know Bartley Green from Bourneville. Chocolate, isn't it? It's actually areas of Birmingham. No, it's chocolate. Well, it's sugary sweet for vendors in Birmingham at the moment, but not so tasty for buyers. House prices in the city have risen by more than a pound an hour in the past year. That's a lot of chocolate. And if that isn't daunting enough, imagine searching in a city almost 100 miles north of where you live and work. No easy task, as plumber Ben and his lawyer wife, Laura, can testify. We didn't really know what areas were going to be suitable for us, did we? we we've heard that Mosley, Kings Heath would be kind of up our street. Always good to listen to advice, be that for a prospective house, or husband. The law firm that I worked at, Bain's uh, flatmate also worked there, and his flatmate had actually said to me, oh, I need to introduce you to my semi-single flatmate, which <laughs> turned out to be Benny. That's me. Um, and me in my suit, basically, turned up to this uh, house party. I think we did a, a George Michael duet together <laughs> on the karaoke, and that was... <laughs> that was it. That was us set in stone. Yeah, careless whispered across the room to each other. <laughs> and we've been together for three and a half years, married for almost one. Best year of my life. <laughs> Laura's new job is the reason for the move. Ooh, nice. And their challenge of finding new friends in a new city isn't daunting them a bit. Oh. I'm going to look to join a netball club. Ben will be joining. Hopefully, start playing football again. So we like to play table tennis together, don't we? I call it ping pong. But... <laughs> ping pong, whiff whaff, whatever you want to call it. I um... get beaten by Laura every every time we play. Friday night, we'll probably Drink champagne, eat lobster, all that sort of oh, jazz. Shut up. We did definitely do not do that. That champagne will have to stay on ice, at least until we find them what they're after. Potential, I think. You yeah. could sum it up in one word. We're quite hands-on, and I'd quite like to do a lot of work. We want to put our own mark on a house. With a £200,000 budget, this lawyer-plumber combi are certainly tapped into their brief. We like to have a big kitchen stroke diner somewhere because that would be the focal point of our house, I think. A garden would be really nice and also Ben mm -hmm. is growing chilies at the moment and... Keen they're... chilli grower. I uh, <laughs> made the mistake of trying one the other day and nearly blew my head <laughs> off. Teams, a calm head is what they need. Cue Mr Cool. It's very difficult mm. living and working in, you know, quite some distance away and not mm. knowing... Yeah your way around, yeah. Yeah. starting a new, new position. When do you start the new job? Um, I start in two weeks' time. Right. So I have um, a couple of weeks off. Yeah, um, in order to house hunt. Yeah, in order to house hunt. It's um, mm. what some people would call stressful, I think we call exciting, don't we? Mm. It's good. It's, um, I think it'll work out. It'll work out if we manage to find you somewhere to live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise, it won't be much good, would it? <laughs> but let's just define what it is you're after. What are, the, what are the kind of crunch points? I think we're looking at something we can put a stamp on. Um, potentially make, you know, make it worth a fair bit more money. Mine would be location. So the ability to create social life. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is pretty important to me. How big does it need to be? I think sometimes Ben's head, he's almost got the children yeah. running around already mm. kind of a thing, mm. and we're not really there yet, so yes, it'd be nice to have a big house, but we don't actually really you need, need it. it as such at the moment. I'm very much here to help, help see you yeah, through. Yeah, good. Um, so let's drink up. Yeah. Perfect. 
that's a plum set of particulars fill, whiff waffing between Ben's family dreams and Laura's social setup. With their 10% deposit and a mortgage, they have £200,000 and are after something with potential that they can add value to. Close to the trendy, bustling parts of town. At least two bedrooms with sociable cooking and dining space. Preferably with off-street parking or at least handy parking. They're not overly familiar with the city, but will be investigating the areas they do like. Kings Heath, neighbouring Sturchley and Kings Norton. I'm also scouring Kings Norton for my couple, but pushing west and south into Northfield and Bromsgrove, where I'm searching for Ed, a development exec with an array of collectibles who rents a city centre flat, and his seamstress fiance Elle, who's out of town living with mum and dad. They're desperate to be under the same roof. Yeah. Living away from each other. Yeah, it has its, it has its bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it has had some bonuses, some, but now every it's weekend, it's just on a it's Sunday same. night, don't want to go home. Some people just work better together. Well, that's our challenge, to find someone a home here in the city. But it's never easy. It's just constant stop and start for a like country bumpkin. <laughs> country Man, bumpkin? My city scum. <laughs> we need a happy medium. Yeah. And a pad for Waldo, their pug. Ed's place doesn't allow dogs and a shortage of sewing space at home means blogging star Elle is desperate for room to fully flex her bobbins. My priorities for a house is that there's room for my sewing room. For me, it's a therapy. I'm, di I'm diagnosed with bipolar. And I currently sew in quite a small space, and it's, it's stopping me from progressing. My priority is mostly going to be space, I think. My collectibles are geeky things like comics and toys, video games. We have a lot of things that like to be on show. So if we could live in a gallery, that'd be great. Having viewed 52 properties in 12 months, they can't be accused of not prioritising their hunt for a home. Well, we got engaged exactly a year ago. Yeah. Um, and at that point, we started looking for a house. House was first, not wedding. It's having our home and us being together, which will make a real difference to my mental health. They're funding the move with savings of £190,000 and a cash loan. A meaty budget, but in a ravenous market. We go to put an offer in, literally that day, and it's already gone. We are desperate. We need a house. We can't live in a cardboard box. We wouldn't he I wouldn't could fit. live in a cardboard box. He wouldn't fit. So, Kirsty, all you need to find is a six foot five cardboard box with pug access. Simples. Somehow, I suspect this search will be slightly harder than that, Phil. If you've seen over 50, what we need to analyse together is what's attainable and what's not. We need two bedrooms and a workspace, yeah. plus <clears throat> display space. Yeah, but it can't be one of those tiny little bedrooms. No. Well, four sewing machines is a lot, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is a lot. A display space, it doesn't need a room to be a display no. space. No, I mean, you can it. get these incredible shelves which yeah. are above the door frame, so they go all the way around exactly. a room. So, yeah. We do want some outside space. So yeah. the only thing that's left, really, is where. Somewhere that's accessible for Ed to get to work. So you do a 45-minute commute on foot at the moment. At the moment, yeah. Places like Moseley or uh, Kings Heath. They'd be lovely places to live. If you stay at the 200 mark, you can remain cash buyers. Yeah. Is there a point which you will push yourselves to borrow some money? We would be open to taking a mortgage if it's something we really like. Drink up. <laughs> we need to get house hunting, but please tell me what you're thinking. I need okay. to hear that. Especially after hearing how many properties they've already seen. That's what's worrying me, Phil. They've 200,000 in cash and want a three-bed house which must incorporate a sewing room for Elle. It's her burgeoning business and helps her manage her mental health. General storage and space is important. As is a maximum one-hour commute to Ed's work. With an outside area or a very close park for Waldo the pug. Morning. Morning. How are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah? What you got on this week, then? Someone who's seen 52 properties over a year. It's a sort of perfect storm of not buying. I've got some challenges because my couple have literally just, just moved from Bristol. They don't know their way around at all. How old are they? They're 30 and 31. You've had the chat, haven't you? I have had the chat. I've said, do you want something now or do you want something that you can grow into and start a family and that kind of thing? Now would be a good time, age-wise. 
You know the stats. You, you can tell them. I should just laminate the stats, give them to you to hand out to people. Kirsty thinks now would be a good time. <laughs> You're hilarious. No one can accuse me of inconsistency. It's very well, in some areas. This one, absolutely consistent. As is how we're always asked to make the impossible possible. Regardless of when my Birmingham newbies choose to start a family, for now, Ben and Laura want easy access to the city's social scene. And I've managed to find them a property with some potential to renovate very close to the bustling Kings Heath High Street. Good area for young professionals, yeah. bit of a music scene. Yep. Great local pub. Excellent, that's great. great. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And look at the house. Yeah, it looks like it's been well maintained. Yeah. Well, let's get in and see what you think. All yeah. right, brilliant. Let's do it. Location and cub appeal are certainly on point. As is the inside. This early 20th century terraced house has already been beautifully renovated. Upstairs, there's a master and spare bedroom, which overlooks this surprisingly private garden. Access is through the dining kitchen, meaning the whole ground floor flow is perfect for entertaining. And there is still scope for them to put their stamp on it. That, plus being 10 grand under budget at 189,950, means this place could fit them perfectly. I really see this as the easy option. It, yeah. it allows you to get in and get on with your lives. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the living space, dining room? I think that's Lovely. actually what we want, but kind of what I wanted to do to it. Yeah. Whether actually having it done is a bonus, mm. maybe it is. Maybe, indeed, get living rather than DIYing. Oh, it's nice. Nice size. Nice size, yeah. Got a nice sense of, like, Space and light, doesn't exactly. it? I don't think there's anything much you could do with it, particularly. Mm, no. I suspect, at the end of the day, Ben's going to want to see something that he can improve perhaps a bit more than this. But it's a strong house in a good area, it's the right size, it's under budget, and it's available. So what's not to like? Yeah, it's a lovely size. Is there enough potential? I do see a lot of potential in it, and a lot of things I would change, and I think we could still add money to it. Seems like our plumber is warming up. But neither of them are really boiling over. How'd you get on, then? Uh, it's uh, tougher. Yeah. Um, I think it depends what we're basing it on. As you see, easy, move in. The potential to make a bit of profit on it has dropped considerably. But good starting Stop. point. Brilliant. Come on, then, follow Thank me. You. Good start, which generally means could do better. This week, I'm house hunting for first-time buyers Laura and Ben, who have left everything that they know and love in Bristol and starting a new life here in Birmingham. But Property One didn't blow them away. I don't think there's anything much you could do with it, particularly. And I'm with toy collector Ed and seamstress Elle, who need to unpick their property prejudices. I'm glad I didn't have to say that. Yep, you'd be properly pickled. Which has been happening to Ed and Elle. They're engaged, desperate to start living together, and have viewed over 50 properties. Elle's diagnosed with bipolar, so their priority is room for her therapeutic sewing to grow. I'm starting their search southwest of the city in Kings Norton, which has a great community vibe, with a farmer's market and plenty of green space for Waldo, their dog. But every silver lining has its cloud a busy road and an extra 15 minutes on Ed's commute. So it is a bit far from Ed's work. Do you think that's why you haven't seen it? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do a strange thing first of all. Okay. We're just going to walk straight into the garage. Okay. OK. OK. You're not parking this property already, are you? No, Phil, I'm just getting into gear. This 1970s semi could flexibly fulfil Ed and Elle's wants, not least due to this underhouse garage a huge option for a sewing space, meaning the upstairs box room becomes the collectibles den, leaving them a spacious master and spare room, which looks out onto this lovely mature garden, accessed from the kitchen, so simple to cook and keep an eye on Waldo. Another advantage of Garage Under is the leafy views afforded by the elevation, which also adds to the airy and bright feel of the living space. Since it's been on a while at £225,000, a deal could be done so as not to borrow too much over their 200 grand cash budget. This is electrified, dry. You've got a massive space. I could very much see this being a workshop space where I could actually have people come and not yeah. have to worry about them actually being able to get into the house. Having <clears> that <throat> main road could really 
push it out. So the workshop works, but will the house work to quash those concerns? This house is immaculate. It is. Just stand and listen for a second. I can't hear that road. No. You can't see the road at all. I, I can, because I'm really tall. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You look like a little wonderland, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. No, it, is, it's very, it is very leafy. <laughs> I'm quite positive about this. I like the space. I love the light. Go and have a look upstairs and come we and tell me what okay. you think. Not sure if Ed wants to get his hands on this place, but Elle's certainly positive. So this is the master. Obviously, this has got the main road outside. It's not like a, you know, definite deal breaker or anything. You can hear the road, definitely. But, you know, we're on the outskirts of a major city. We could topsy-turvy and have that room as it's our room. As our bedroom, yeah. Seeing that many houses and none of them being right should ring every alarm bell in my head. Experience tells me that I'm not going to crack this, but I'm ever the optimist. With an eye for a house. That would be an optometrist, Phil. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. So what do you think of this wide, wide garden? It's very nice, actually. What did you think of upstairs? I think that the room sizes are adequate for our needs. It literally is the commute. I think that's the biggest worry for me. It's a um, good option. Yeah. Happy. We're happy. Oh, good. OK. Not sure if they're trying to convince you or themselves. Yep. I sense the commuting conundrum is what I have to crack. For Laura and Ben, I sensed Property One didn't fulfil their renovation requirements. So that's what I'm trying to fix. We've moved southwest and close to Kirsty's first property in Kings Norton. Farmer's market, handy amenities, lovely village green, where their money goes a lot further. Partly due to the level of opportunity in this property. It comes with two compromises. One is there's only a fairly small courtyard at the back. OK. okay yeah. And the second one is parking. Okay. There's plenty of it, but okay. it's 50 so yards away. Yards. It's not ideal, um, but it's livable. That, that's fine, really, for me. That's one compromise kicked to the curb already. And I think any garden issues will be too, if they can feel this place's potential. This early 20th century house has a double-fronted reception set up with one of those backing onto a slightly unusual kitchen diner layout. The dogleg design could have a better flow, and the garden would benefit from a tidy up. But upstairs, a bathroom's ripe for reconfiguration as well as three bedrooms. It's certainly livable whilst also fulfilling their desire to get hands on. There's roofing and carpeting yet to be completed, so the top of budget 200 grand asking price could be negotiable. Come on through. Oh, wow. There's lots to Lovely. see. Original tales. Excellent. So it's kind of double fronted. Plus, you've got the kitchen diner, plus, you've got three bedrooms. Wow. And the bathroom upstairs. Right. Massive. There's no doubting its size, but what about layout? Strange arrangement. It's very strange, yeah. yeah. Um, it's where there's not a flow, if you know what I mean. It could be adjusted. One of those places you've kind of really got to think about how you do it. And how quickly you could mm. do it. You could do it. Mm -hmm. Well, you could look at it in the meantime. Let's see some more. OK. Upstairs. Letting the potential percolate, Pip. Yep, it's a grower. And then up here... Oh, wow. We've got three really generous bedrooms. Oh, yeah, this is a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. That's a lovely size room, it's isn't good, it? It's good, isn't it? Mm. Mm. How about you, Ben? What's on your mind? It didn't really have that warm, inviting feeling to it, which I kind of want from the kitchen diner. I don't think you're ever going to get a kind of warm embrace from a house that's not lived in. Yeah. Why don't you have a bit of time to yourself? I think Ben's thermostat needs to be tweaked by a warmer hand than mine. It feels definitely the most like a detached house yeah. that we've, we've seen. Almost since. like you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Well, they're a really positive couple, which always makes my work so much easier. But I think... I might have just overplayed it with this one. There's loads of options, there's loads of opportunity, but I suspect they're just struggling to get their heads around it a little bit. It's so much house for your money, I isn't know. it? I uh, know. It's a lot different to anything we've, we've looked at. I'm hoping that's a positive. How'd you get on, then? Good. Yeah, very good. Head not spinning too much? A little bit, actually, spinning yeah. Spinning massively, actually, but um, I really, really like it. 
I think it's got massive amount of potential. The, the layout of the kitchen diner at the moment, yeah. and that probably is going to be more work than you think. But at the same time, the amount of house that you're getting for what you're paying is mm. tremendous. <laughs> Come on. Okay. All right, thanks. Let's see what tomorrow brings. You may have them confused, Phil. Well, Confucius himself said the cautious seldom err. They just need time to mull this one over. Quoting philosophy, who are you and what have you done with Phil? With Ed and Elle, Property One's hour-long commute was too far. So we're now in the ancient parish of Northfield, and the commute from here is down to around 20 minutes. As you can see, it's a nice quiet street. No busy... Oh, there's the train! Yeah, we heard the train. We heard the train <laughs> because the, the train. station is just minutes away. <laughs> Ed, what do you feel about the location? That's easy for me. Four-minute walk. I can get a train straight in and, yeah. On that happy note, let's go in. That was good timing. No, Phil, good house hunting. In fact, we're so far ahead of the game that other than the estate agents, we're first through the door. Downstairs has a very bright open plan kitchen, then it's the extension, currently a utility room which could house Elle's sewing setup. Or build a garden seamstress studio in place of this old shed. Upstairs, a master bedroom, a double spare room, and okay, they'd rather not have a box room, but there is scope to go into the loft. Their cash maximum is £200,000, and this is on at offers over. So they may need to borrow a couple of grand to avoid losing out. <gasps> Very sunny kitchen. So the sun is in the kitchen in the morning. Uh, it's sold. <laughs> I wish it was that easy, Al. But it is lovely they put in that wood-burning stove. Do you want to have a quick look in the garden? Yes. OK. Oh, very, everyone's very excited. It's on the market for £200,000. You sold me. Um, sold it. Sold it. It's got great potential it? as well. I'd love to, like, you know, sort the garden and... Manor from heaven. Yeah, we can see that. Go and have a look upstairs. OK. Lovely. The heady heights of this search. Although maybe not heady enough for Ed. <laughs> this is for you. But it's such a... It's so light. <laughs> yeah. So no, much I light really like for me. It. Yeah. We could remove this and have my sewing space in here. It would mean that I could then have a sewing table here. This is 200. Yeah, it's really good. We could totally go for that. And after their year of joyless searching, we found a contender. And they've not even seen the upstairs yet. Oh, it's like a really deep cupboard. Ah, cupboard that could be stairs going up to the loft. That's the advantage of viewing 52 properties. You do get a feel for houses. If you want to know whether it's possible to extend into the roof of a house, just come out back and look at the roofs of the houses next door. But you've got to look at the ones which are the same. Next door here, someone's done a roof extension, but you can see it's a different type of roof. But on the left, there's an extension, and that's the same type of roof. You see? I'm not just all about knocking Phil. Well, not today, at least. So, just to say, before you say anything else, just come and stand back here. Do you see that? Yeah. Similar house to this, uh -huh. extended into the roof with the Velux lighting. You're absolutely right. I got upstairs into that loft, which then would add value, would give an extra room. Elle's well into it, but with Ed, I just can't tell. I'm generally quite happy with it. Quite. Yeah. Yeah. What would make you skipping about happy with it? I don't skip. He doesn't no. ever skip. Right. No okay. skipping. No. Um, general signs of emotion, I don't do. Right, OK. <laughs> he's actually really excited. I know that he likes this house, but he's not going to be really exciting and showing it and right. jumping okay. up and down. He's not that's me. That's fine. OK, that's fine. This house is going to go and it's going to go quickly. Yeah. There's a whole load of other folk who want to get their foots in the door. Foots? <laughs> that's a new one, Kirsty. Shh, Phil or you'll feel the sharp end of mine. We've got one more to see. Yeah, we have. I don't think we need to. I think we just go home now. Well, I like that thought, but let's go on. <laughs> Not calling the agent already. Your final property must be a corker. Oh, it is, Phil. It really is. We're in Birmingham, where I'm trying to find practically perfect properties for a pug-loving pair. And I'm on a mission searching for property with potential close to bars and restaurants. After an unsuccessful year of 52 house viewings, I'm happy there's now one in the running for Ed and Al. Uh, it's sold. 
with Ben and Laura, who only moved from Bristol a few days ago, we're back in Bohemian King's Heath, on the other side of the high street to their first property. And this time, I found them a terrace of similar size, but with huge potential. I'm feeling quite chipper today. Yeah. Okay. Because I have just had a look. This house was only valued yesterday. All right, okay. wow. 165 grand. Whoa. That's more like it. Whoa, this is very exciting. Yeah. There's more scope here than in any other property I'm showing them. It'll come down to vision and willing. Upstairs, this period terrace has two bedrooms and a large bathroom. But it's downstairs that bulges with opportunity. After coming through two reception rooms, if they built a large extension out from the pokey kitchen, they'd have that open cooking, dining, garden flow they're so keen on. Possibilities also to go up into the loft. So if they're up for upheaval, they could make this place sing. Another high note is the price. 35 grand under budget at 164950. Out here, when you look back at the property, oh. you start to appreciate the, the potential. Yeah, it looks like you could extend the kitchen to quite a substantial size. Yeah, if you're you coming all the way back yeah. to here, that would be yeah. rather big. The, the question is, could you live in it? Mm -hmm whilst the works went on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good question. Um, mm. To get to the dream, the prospective nightmare of construction site living may keep them from sleep. So, master bedroom's at the front. OK. In order to get to the loft, usually people would put the staircase in there... All okay. right. ..going up that way. Right. Just pinches a bit off this second bedroom. OK. Yeah, uh-huh. I do like this one. I can absolutely massively see the potential in it. I just think that we'd have to spend a lot of time and money just getting it to a position where we could actually even begin to make it anything livable. And that worries me. Why don't you two have a bit of time together? All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thank I'll you. catch up with you downstairs. All right, great. Thanks. I'm sensing that whilst the opportunity is here, their hearts aren't. I can imagine it done up mm -hmm. and it would be amazing and it would tick a lot of boxes and particularly what you'd want to do to a property. Mm -hmm. But it's just... I just don't love it. I know. I know what you're saying. As do I. So what's it to be, then? We are a bit sceptical oh. of how much work there is to be done. Yeah. Um, but I'm... Not sceptical, I'm just uncertain. Yeah. There is a lot. Mm. Yeah. Where are you at with property two at the moment? All these terrace houses are always going to look the same. That had something yeah. that was different yeah, that we that's... really could work with. So we may be walking away from property three, but their fondness for property two is gathering pace. Picking the right house is always tough. And up till now, both our couples have found frustration rather than a freehold foothold in Britain's second city. Ben and Laura relocating from Bristol, birthplace of Brunel's Bridge, Tarmac and Wallace and Gromit. Prices there have risen massively by almost 17.2% in a year. But Birmingham's not doing badly either, at almost 7.4%. Brum's certainly not slouching, with the youngest population of any city in Europe and a recent investment project of over a billion pounds. It's now the most popular UK destination for those leaving London. Last year, over 6,000 people decapitalised for around a 40% lower cost of living and housing. With Ed and Elle, they absolutely loved Property 2. It's really good. We could totally go for it. So Phil and I are taking a chance on a niche conversion, which they'll love or hate. Although we've pushed further from the city, Ed's commute is still 10 minutes less than at present. Bromsgrove's cool indie vibe should appeal to their geek chic style. Hopefully the house will too. We are again three minutes walk from the station. And you've got dog walking just behind here. A fantastic park. Fields. There's barely any garden with this house. Yeah. It's, it's all about the house. OK. OK. It's interesting. It looks really yeah. different. Property two might be about to have its socks blown off. Well, it's got big boots to fill, but converted ten years ago, this end of terrace home does pack plenty of punch. On the ground floor is a bright square kitchen, which opens out onto this full-width lounge diner. Upstairs is a large family bathroom, an L-shaped double and another smaller bedroom. Then the crown jewels. This two-room top floor with amazing views. A wonderful space for living, sewing and displaying collectibles. And all this for their top budget of £200,000. So with all this place's pluses, we'll have to quickly address the minor minus. This is your bit. So you could make this really nice with pots and everything. 
But I have to say that I think that this is enchanting. It's beautiful. It's like being in the clouds. Ed. Yeah. What do you always say? I'd like a house in the clouds. Seems like this address could be cloud number nine. Is this OK for, for us, I suppose? Yeah, it's, uh, it's doable, isn't it? As long as we're able to tote Waldo somewhere. He could do pug aerobics on all those stairs, then have a nap in either first floor bedroom. One boxy, one large. But again, don't be put off by the use of beds in these Why rooms. Why don't you and I head on upstairs? So much character. I can really... I... So much character. It's so much character. I can certainly see two in the room. Right. Earlier, when I was just prodding out a bit in the garden of the previous house, you were going, you know, this is great, this is great, and he was like... <laughs> As usual. Because <laughs> at the moment, I'm thinking, we found a house that... Elle really likes, but I'm not sure whether Ed likes it. That's right. how he is. I didn't okay. know that we were dating for so long right. because he just doesn't make things clear. It, it'll be interesting to see what Phil gets out of him. OK. Man to man. Well, there's no doubt this is my favourite bit of this house. That's really good. Yeah, I love the view. Pretty special. Yeah. All right. I really like this. I like something that's just a bit unusual as well. Well, we better find out what Elle thinks up here. OK. Elle! OK, so it's more than just a small yeah. room, isn't it? Yeah. That's a whole living room. And a whole sewing room. I oh, like the fact that you could be here pretending to work. You wait to see Ed just coming back from the... <laughs> Quick tidy everything yeah, up. Something. You can see him coming back from <laughs> the Toys station. What are you saying, Phil? Get the kettle on. <laughs> it would hardly boil before he'd walked from the station, as was the case at Much Loved Property 2. I feel this place is gently simmering. How are you feeling between the two? I like the unusualness of this. It's very unique. That's style. very us. It is very us. I did really like the garden and the log burner kitchen in the other house. Generally, it sounds like you're in a good place. You're considering a couple of properties. Mm -hmm. Are you considering a couple of properties? Yes. yes. Yes, we are. And there's one final thing which might tip in this townhouse's favour. It's vast. Uh... <laughs> it's shared. Oh, OK. It's shared, it's shared between six. It's obviously not used a huge amount. The residents generally park on the street, so room's not an issue. The same can't be said for Phil's manners. Let's get up for this shot. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Goodbye, everybody! Let's go with them! Get your hats. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't no Indiana Jones, Phil Spencer. <laughs> oh, I know well. you think you are. I can see what was going on. <laughs> Ah. As for what's going through Ed and Els, now they've got to narrow it down from two. For Ben and Laura's last crusade, we're completing a triangle around Kings Heath Park, very close to their first and third properties. Therefore, also the cool Kings Heath High Street. But Kirsty's sticking with me, as I want to ensure they can see beyond the house's slightly suburban feel. I think this looks like a nice, very solid big house. It feels quite old. It, it feels does. quite an old area, if that makes sense. Yes, so I think it's... it's becoming younger. It's a circle of life. Can you do that song? <laughs> no. From the Lion King. From the Lion King. It makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Hakuna Matata, Phil. Means no worries, which I hope is the case here. This 1930s semi offers a lot of things on Ben and Laura's wish list, like room size, as with most ex-council stock. The dining room and adjoining kitchen is big enough that they wouldn't have to encroach into the living room if they wanted to knock things around. Likewise, upstairs, plenty of space in all three bedrooms. Parking, not an issue here, unlike at their current leader, Property 2, and this place is 25 grand cheaper at £175,000. This is as close to what you were looking for. I think it as is, As in your yeah. big open plan Definitely kitchen layout diner. Wise. It's not got the same sort of edge to it that the other yeah. ones have had. So I'm not sure that's so really... The thing is, how old yeah. are you, Ben? 30. Phil's past 50. And... <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> how old are you, Phil? I'm uh... not nearly 50. <laughs> are you nearer 50 than 40? 
Yeah, by one year. Thank you very much. Perfectly OK with that. How about you? Who was Younger 40 for three you. years on the trot. <laughs> Younger than you, that I do know. Well, neither of us is getting any younger larking around here. Just get your specs on for that garage remote, Phil. I know how tricky you find them. Whoa, electric garage. Every man's dream, eh? Wow, that's perfect. I can see myself sort of pottering around and looking at people driving past with a bit of a... <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> yeah. But what you're getting for your money, maybe more and more people will be moving here. What do you think attracts Ben to this property? I think the layout and the actual, just the nice shape of the rooms, the size, I think all of that's going to be a big, a big tick to Benny. Okay. But I think, actually, if he were to live the reality, he would hate it. OK. It's that circle of life again, and I sense this house is giving them more 180 than 360. I want to try and convince myself, but I don't, at the same time, I, I don't. I know when you've switched off. I've switched I know, off. and you've switched off. I, I just don't like it. So Ben's switched off, just as I've switched on. It's a massage chair. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Too much information. Look, you can have it pulsing. Oh, no. Or, or swelling. <laughs> it doesn't say it swelling. Does no, you made Swell, that up. Tap, pulse, wave, <laughs> select. I didn't realise chairs could be so much fun. I mean, not really, <laughs> not really for me, but you should really have a go. Let's have a look. Oh, my God, it does say swell. That's pulsing my rear. It is not. You're it making is. that up. It, I'm not feeling it. No, I'm not getting anywhere your rear. Gordon Bennett. Can you turn it off quickly? <laughs> it's, ah, it's really vibrating. Which may be the only positive vibe around here, I suspect. Yeah, imagine it's in its done-up condition. Do you feel...? No, probably not. Excited by it? No, probably not. Well, at least someone's hot under the collar for this place. <sighs> That's it. Cool that a little bit. Perhaps fresh air will bring a fresh perspective too. How are you feeling about this? I think you've done a really good job in finding us a property that ticks all our boxes, but neither of us like it. <laughs> it's, it's weird how that it happens, is. isn't it? What do you want to do tomorrow? I would really like to see property number two mm -hmm. again. Have another look round there. Good news. I didn't think the sun had set on this search. Although, on my relationship with Kirsty, it's getting close. Do you know what the P in OAP stands for? <laughs> Philip? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, comedy night tonight, aren't we? This week, we're racing and bracing against the bustling Birmingham market. I'm with seamstress L and fiancé Ed, who've had a year of their housing hopes haberdashed until we salvaged the situation. Are you considering a couple of properties? Yes. Yes, yes we are. Before we see if Kirsty can help them firm up a favourite, I'm taking Ben and Laura back to the Dogleg Diner House in Kings Norton. I know it's been growing on them, but it's crunch time. There is a lot of potential, but potentially a lot of work. There's quite a bit to think about yes. in the back here. I think we would certainly yep. like to um, knock this wall away, mm -hmm. yeah. level that flooring, flooring out, and then you've actually created a much bigger bit of space there. You may well have a winner, Phil. Nice. Wow. Yeah, it's a great size. Oh, you could totally make this into a bedroom. You could do so much with this bathroom as well. Mm -hmm. Put a big walk-in shower in there. Oh, perfect. That'd be a great size shower. Dare I charge my negotiating phone? We love this house. We're in love with it. It's so nice seeing it again and it confirming the way we felt about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Terrific. Okay. I'm delighted. Yeah, I'm delighted that, you, that you're pleased. Well, they've fallen for the house. Now it's about getting the right deal. You're one step ahead of me, Phil. Ed and Elle have trimmed it down to property two and property three. But I can't tell if they'll offer on either. The quirkiness of the third one, you know, it's very much a house that is us, it's weird. The second one had more potential. Are you keen on pursuing the second one? Yes, I think so. Did you hear that? Hold your horses. I heard yes, but then I heard That's I think so. That's my version of just saying yes and following it up with okay. something else. Right, OK. <laughs> An offer on that house has been put in right. for £205,000, but it is from someone who has got something to sell. That could be good news for Ed and Elle. No mortgage, no chain, better buyers. My advice would be to say, we've got 200,000. 
in cash. Well, what are we going to do? We've already established that we're going to go for it. OK, so there we go. We're going to put an offer in. Right. OK. Maddie, it's Kirsty. Just to tell you, they are genuine cash buyers, which is why I'm uh, making an offer for £200,000. OK, thanks, Maddie. OK, bye. The wait begins. Smart. Five grand less than the current offer, but theirs is cash. No such luxury in my end, but we've got other areas to negotiate. As you know, it's on the market for 200000 mm -hmm. Yep. I'm also told that the vendor has in his mind a figure. It's not far off the asking price. He was going to patch the roof and he was going to carpet it. Maybe that's a point of negotiation. Yeah, yeah we, I mean, we'd be happy to take it as it is. In which case, you might be a bit more flexible on price. Maybe. Do you have a figure in mind? I would like to pay 190 for it. Yeah. I don't think you'll get it at 190, but I, I, I'm with you. We'd, so we'd be willing to go higher, I think, because we do love it. Why don't we say 192? Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cindy, hello. It's Phil Spencer here. I do have an offer for you. They would be happy to take the property off his hands um, as it stands today. The offer is 192,000 pounds. Thanks, Cindy. Cheers. Bye-bye. It's lower than he's hoping for. She's oh. going to try and ring him now. So it's down to the vendor's discount for excluding the new carpets and roofing. Tense times on both sides of this search. Maddie, that was quick. Uh-huh. Right, let me have a word with them and I will get back to you. Bye. They will remove it from the market for 202500 That would mean getting a... That would mean getting a mortgage. Listen, I can lend you 2500 And I mean that very seriously. I've never said that to anyone before. I don't think I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's any way of finding the 2500 We've got 200 Yes. But as I say, that... 200 the stamp duty yeah so, so that was this? everything yeah i could ring her back and say we are prepared to put another thousand pounds into the pot as a gesture of goodwill or do you think i should just ring her back and say no i'm really sorry but it just isn't possible would you want to lose that house would you want to lose no that i house? wouldn't want to lose well, the house no <laughs> in my case no well 1000 is a lot easier to find than 2500 yeah. should we Let's try that really Let's, yeah okay Hopefully, Phil's incoming call rings with more certainty. That was very quick work. Right. OK. Um, let me pass on the news. Uh, <laughs> they're looking absolutely horrified. So that is good news. It's been accepted. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, 192. So yes. It's way the class. Wow. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much. Well done. Success. Eight grand under budget, eight grand under asking. With Al and Ed, they've offered four grand less than the bid currently on the table, but theirs is cash. Brilliant. That's fantastic. We've had the offer accepted. OK, brilliant. Bye. Yay! <laughs> wow! <Whoa. laughs> that is an impressive show of enthusiasm. I'm really impressed. I think we got a dual thumbs up there. <laughs> From fingers crossed to two thumbs up. Now Ed's emotional outpourings know no bounds. <laughs> and actually, after the survey came back, Ellen and Ed were able to negotiate back down again, paying 198,000 in the end. And nearly two months later, we will be getting the keys tomorrow. Tomorrow. With the legals now all pinned down, they're hatching plans and considering my idea of swapping the old garden shed for a sewing studio. Ed can spend some time in the garden and I can spend some time in my studio. Kind of looking forward to the garden. I don't know why. <laughs> I must be age. Ageing Ed's not the only one who's going to love the outdoor space. 
I think that Waldo will not know what's hit him. He's going to be so happy to have yeah. a garden. Ed's going to move in first with Elle taking things in stages, but she's looking forward to getting settled. Having a home will mean that I'll be able to maintain my illness better and progress. We done good. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> For Birmingham newbies Ben and Laura, their new home also represents the chance to get really bedded in. Having the house that neither of us, I think, thought we would maybe get, and all the potential that the house has, it's really just rooted us now in Birmingham, and that's a really nice feeling. And they're undaunted by the scale of their project. It's very exciting, and I actually like the fact that pretty much everything needs to be done to the house. The roof isn't at all watertight. We could see right through it. All in places. <laughs> One place is enough to see through a roof. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty to keep them busy when they officially become Brummy homeowners in two weeks' time. It should um, just be for our wedding anniversary, shouldn't it? Mm, yeah. First, first year, so first, the paper our first wedding will hopefully be the, the deeds to the house. Oh, you're romantic. <laughs> <laughs>